Hello YouTube friends, um, I'm Olivia B. Um, this is a quilty tube video, um, not a floss tube video this time. Um, so if you, if this video popped up in your um, subscription feed, it's because you subscribe to my floss tube channel where I talk about my cross stitch projects, thank you. Um, but I'm not going to talk about cross stitch in this video. So um, I'm just gonna be talking about my quilting and um, so if you aren't interested in quilting, I would definitely skip this one or else I'd be very bored. Um, for those of you that are interested in my quilting, um, I am very excited to talk to you about it because I don't have a lot of people to talk to about quilting and um, I want to geek out. So thanks for joining me. Um, so I, um, I'm naming this Quilty Tube. I took that name from Celeste from Celeste Creates. I will link her channel down below and she um, she makes cross stitch floss tube videos as well and she um, made some videos just about her quilting and called them Quilty Tube and said if anyone wants to use that name they should and I thought I would go ahead and do that. Um, uh, in the cross stitch community if you you just have to search the word floss tube and you can get tons of videos about um, cross stitch where people are you know it's kind of show and tell format um, and for quilting I there's not really doesn't seem to be a term where you can look that up and find that and so I think quilty tube is a great term so I'm gonna go ahead and use that for this video. Um, I, um, I'm realizing that in order to make this video come together I'm going to have to do some editing. Um, I'll have to do it in segments. Um, you know quilts are bigger than cross stitch projects so I can't really just like make myself a nice neat stack. So um, if you see edits that's what it, um, that's why. Um, okay deep breath. A little excited. I know, I always get nervous with these things for some reason. Um, so I'm in my craft room. This is where I sew, where I cross stitch, etc. It's my happy place. Um, this hutch behind me, um, a dear family friend, when she moved to the nursing home, I inherited this from her and um, stained it myself. And one of the glass panels is broken. Just in case that's distracting you from the video, I apologize. I really need to replace it, but I keep procrastinating. Um, but that's my beautiful fabric stash behind me that I love that is growing and needs to stop. Um, so uh, just to kind of, you know, if, if you've never been here before, um, if you don't know me or, you know, don't follow me. Otherwise, um, I thought I could kind of fill you in on where I am in my kind of quilting journal uh, journey, journal journey, my quilting journey, just so you're, in case you know, you can decide if this is what you're looking for or not. Um, I still consider myself a beginner quilter. I um, I think I've been quilting a couple years now. Um, so I, I, I don't know, I think of myself as a beginner quilter who's made a few quilts. Um, I am, I guess I'd say self-taught, but I, I don't feel right saying that because I feel like I get a lot of information from other quilters that's out in the world on uh, YouTube and on the internet and uh, in books and that kind of thing. Um, but I have a lot to learn and that's kind of the fun part for me. Um, cross stitch is probably my main crafting passion. Um, that is kind of like my therapy. That's my, that's how I spend the last couple, couple hours of my day and that relaxes me. Quilting is more like, um, gets my brain going and it's something I do more um, when I have time on the weekend and uh, thanks to the pandemic I've had more time so that's nice um, but uh, yeah so I'd say I'm a beginner um, I'm still learning I have a lot to learn I am very open to advice if you um, are willing to take the time to give me some um, if I'm show you how I do something and you know that there's probably a better way to do it that would have better results um, please feel free I would love your feedback um, it would not be unsolicited advice. I am soliciting it. <laughs> um, and if you are also kind of a beginner quilter, I'll try to uh, show you some of the things, um, the tools I'm using, um, where I've gotten my inspiration from, uh, just so you, you know, just to give you a little guidance if you need it. So again, I'm a beginner. Um, I'll also say I'm not a perfectionist. Um, so I'm sure you'll see that in my quilts. Um, that's what kind of keeps this relaxing for me. Um, I... I love old quilts, antique quilts, and um, those aren't perfect either. I uh, I like things that look handmade, so I'm totally fine when my things look handmade. I may strive to do it so that everything matches up and looks right, but I'm not upset when it doesn't, and I don't um, I don't put a lot of stress on that. Um, okay, so. Um, 
guess I should start from the kind of beginning. Um, several years ago, I, I want to say maybe like 10 years ago before I even cross-stitched, um, I decided I want to learn how to sew and I bought myself an inexpensive sewing machine off of Amazon and um, I would often pick up fabric and sewing notions at garage sales and estate sales um, for a very, very cheap. And um, so I wanted to make things out of those things. Um, and so I used books from the library and um, taught myself the basis, basics of sewing um, I, and bought a few books. And one, the first couple books I started out with were books that um, taught you the basics and then had projects in them. And you often went from one project to the next and it kind of helped build your skills. So you'd make, a, you know, like an over the shoulder bag, a pillowcase, uh, an apron, that kind of thing. Um, there were like two main books that I used and one of them, Sorry, I was, um, well, mainly what I wanted to learn was how to make clothes. And, um, I, you know, I tried, <laughs> but, um, I was, I wasn't good at it, but I mean, I, you know, in order to be good at it, you have to keep trying and failing. And, um, I just found I didn't have the patience. It was just, it was kind of frustrating and I, I would get frustrated and then it would stress me out. And I was like, okay, this obviously isn't like a, a fun hobby for me. So, um, I didn't really pursue that, but um, in the process, I did learn how to sew, which was awesome. Um, made some bags, like some tote bags, and I've made project bags for my cross stitch and that kind of thing. But one of the things in one of those books, one of the projects, was to make a patchwork um, quilt, just a small one. It was just um, joining squares together. And so I had a bunch of um, fabrics I'd collected from garage sales, the state sales, thrift stores, that kind of thing. And I made a um, I pieced a patchwork quilt uh, top, which I still have. It's not a quilt, but I've made the top. And so I thought I would show you guys that. Um, this is that. And um, this is a very good example of <laughs> how good I am at choosing colors to go on quilts. I really just figured, you know, they're all... Um, fabrics with flowers on them so they must all go together right there's like no volume whatsoever in this quilt I know volume quilt I know that low volume quilts are a thing I didn't know that that wasn't intentional um so it's a very you know it's I guess I would call it a little bland to be honest but I do love the cute fabrics in it and um my plan um is to maybe applique some stuff colorful things on top of it um and make it a little more interesting and then I will um quilt it but I uh that was so that was like official start to quilting I guess um but after making this I didn't I didn't keep going everything else just seemed kind of intimidating as far as um quilting and binding and everything and I I guess at the time I just wasn't all that interested so I just packed this away as one does <laughs> and um it's just so then I, um, I, like I said, I, I didn't really stick to sewing. I ended up um, eventually getting into cross stitch and um, using my sewing skills for whatever I had, sewing knowledge to make things like project bags, um, which I love. And then um, a few years ago, I, I got, became more interested in quilting and that is really due to floss tube. Um, and the floss tubers, um, cross stitchers who also quilted on the side um they really kind of they would show their projects and that inspired me a lot and there are i could there's a long list of floss tubers who also quilt and who um contributed to that inspiration i um i started to make a list and i was like this is kind of silly because i'm gonna leave people out and, and feel bad or they'll feel bad or um you know i just didn't want to go down that road but I, there are people that i a few people that i wanted to mention just to give you an idea of my journey and that was it's really started I think the first step to feeling like okay I could actually do this was Christine from Stitch All The Things um she is a skilled quilter and skilled cross stitcher and she took the time to make a series in which she walked you through all of the steps um to make a patchwork quilt um and she really kind of she simplified it and dumbed it down for us that had never sewn a quilt before and um it was just the it was just because christine is a cross stitcher she's a floss tuber she's already she already feels like a cross stitch friend and so it was like a friend just kind of telling you how to make a quilt and that was huge that was big and she one of those um videos was about choosing colors and prints and i still have a lot to learn in that area but um that that was kind of a dawning moment of oh that makes a lot of sense 
Um, and then uh, Caroline from Off the Grid Needle Arts, she did um, a little series on um, English paper piecing. And that got me to go, you know, buy some hexi templates and um, and make something English paper piecing. So those were the kind of the two starters. Um, and then my big, I, I would say my one of my biggest inspirations um, is Lori from Textilist. I will link all of these people down below just in case you never heard of them. Um, I would highly encourage you to go check out Lori's videos. She hasn't made one in a while. I think she's going to make another one soon, but um, she all of her videos are on her channel for you to watch anytime you want. I'm going to put her name, how it's typed on the screen so you can actually see it if you're just looking it up. Um, but Lori is a very experienced quilter, quilter and seamstress. Um, and just from her first video, she starts showing you like all of these beautiful things, um, very much my taste. And that was just like an eye opener and every video was just like, oh, you know, I was like drooling, like I, I want to make these things too. <laughs> and then um, Lori's partner in crime, Lisa from Kindred Stitcher is one of my big enablers as well. Um, she, I was interested in blackboard designs, one, one quilt in particular, which I'm, is now a project and I'll show you. But Lisa has totally driven me down that hole of like all the quilting books and all of the beautiful projects. and. It's the same as with cross stitch. You, you you might see something, um, and then someone else points it out and talk, start talking about all the possibilities. And next thing you know, you're dreaming of it, and it's very it's a lot of fun. And I'm really thankful to all of all the people who show quilts or talk about their ideas with quilts. Um, and then um, Christy from Cross Hatch Quilts and Olivia from Pumpkin Hollow Quilts um, are a couple of floss tubers who are always sharing their quilting projects, and um, they're very inspiring. They make beautiful quilts, but also they really kind of take the time to explain what they, what they are, where those patterns came from, what they use, that kind of thing. And that's, I found that very helpful. They don't just assume that everyone knows um, everything they're talking about. So that's been big. Um, so I'm, I'm thankful of those ladies. Um, and then I have to mention my friend Rebecca from Hedgerow Stitching, who is also kind of, I feel like we're going down the same rabbit holes at the same time. And um, so it's been nice to kind of feed off of her her energy as well. And then finally, um, Fat Quarter Shop and Lori Holt. Um, those are two sources of a lot of information who take the time to make well-made videos and share that information for free. Um, and those those have been big helps to me. I watch the, I don't know about you guys, but I watch the um, Fat Quarter Shop every week, just the live stream. I can't watch it while they're streaming because I'm working, but um, that's, I love watching that on the weekends and I always pick something up. So those are, those are the channels that I love to watch and I've gotten a lot from, and I'll link all of those down below. But um, that really kind of kick-started me, um, made me feel like I could really do quilting and um, got me excited to do it. Um, so that's the background and now I think I'm Oh no, I want to tell you about a couple projects. I guess my first couple projects I can't show you um, because they've been given away. Um, but I used the, uh, this is, I know a lot of you know this one, this is the Yellow Brick Road quilt pattern and this really helped get me started. Um, I made a baby quilt for my friend Maddie, um, for her baby girl out of some old uh, Blackbird Designs fabrics um, because Maddie loves Blackbird Design and that aesthetic. Um, and so I used that pattern to make that one. And then I, um, I joined my friends, um, Emily C and Diana from, um, it is, it is Kismet, um, Stitches. She's a quilter as well. And we, um, used a cotton and steel, uh, Sarah Watts fabric line with gnomes. I love gnomes. Um, and we used the yellow brick road and did a little quilt along. Um, and I, I, the quilting went fine, but guys, my color choices were just very <laughs> unfortunate. I, um, it was a good lesson for me. I, you know, I just took all my favorite prints from the fabric line and figured they're all in the same fabric line, so it'll work, right? And then it wasn't until I like, sewed them all together, did all the work, and then I looked at it and I was like, it looked kind of like Christmas just threw up over it on it. It was like reds and greens and black, and um, it was not to my taste. And, you know, you reach that point when you, you do that and it's like, well, I just spent all this money on the fabrics. I spent all this time making this quilt top. Um, and it's like, do I, do I, do I keep going or what? And by some miracle, my sister loved it. My sister and I have very different tastes. She is amazing taste when it comes to color and all of that. I am not, I'm not so much. I'm more shades of beige, you know? 
And, um, but she really loved the quilt um, as a Christmas quilt. She likes gnomes as well. So I did finish it and I gave it to her. So those are two quilts under my belt. Um, but now I'm going to show you the quilts, first quilt I made for myself. So I think, um, I don't know if this is the case for ev everyone. I haven't really asked anyone before, but um, I know for myself, and I imagine this case, I'm drawn towards certain um, kinds of blocks in quilts. Um, so my favorite things that I, I find myself drawn to are uh, flying geese, um, half square triangles, um, and log cabins. I've never made a log cabin anything, but that's a dream one day. Um, so I, for my first quilt for me, um, I decided that I would do half square triangles in a scrappy quilt formation, um, or scra scrappy colors. You know, I wanted all the colors. Um, Joe Morton's my favorite fabric designer. Um, I'm drawn to, you know, the Civil War reproduction um, prints. We'll see. Um, but I'd say she's probably my favorite. I love her colors, her kind of rich colors. Um, so I did, this quilt is mostly with her fabrics. Um, and if you've seen, you might have seen cross stitch this in one of my cross stitch videos before, but um, this is that quilt. It's just, you know, it's just all half square triangles in um, mostly Joe Morton fabrics. So this is not easy, shall we? <laughs> um, and yeah, it took me time and I really, it really helped me learn how to make half square triangles because I had to make a lot. Um, this is the back also a Joe Morton print um, and yeah I I machine quilted it I absolutely love this quilt and I'm very proud of it um, I know it's just you know half square triangles over and over again but I love it so this is my first uh, completed quilt um, so yeah half square triangles um, I mentioned in the beginning that Caroline from Off the Grid Needle Arts showed um, us how to make, uh, you know, how to do English paper piecing. Um, and around the same time, my friend Allie, who's another floss tuber, Allie's Stitching Studio, she's a quilter. And um, she showed us a, I think a queen size quilt she made with hex with hexies um, that she'd English paper pieced. And so of course I put those two things together and was like, okay, um, I'm going to English paper piece myself a huge quilt. So. This was maybe, I want to say like three or four years ago. Um, and so I splurged and I got a fat quarter bundle of Minnick and Simpson's um, Farmhouse Reds, I think is the name of the line. Um, and I started piecing. So I just want to show you my quilt three or four years later. It's a table runner. <laughs> this, this is years later. I'm not even joking. I mean, I don't know what I, I'm a cross stitcher. Okay. That's what I do in the evening. <laughs> I did not end up doing a lot of English paper piecing. I, um, I do have like a few EPP flowers. I'll make them every once in a while. Mostly if I'm on a longer car ride and I'm not the one driving, that's what I'll do. But this is as far as I got. I have, um, I have hand quilted it. Uh, this is the back and I need to, um, trim it and bind it, but, um, but it's still cute. I still love it. And um, yeah, I learned how to EPP. So thanks to Caroline for that and to Allie for the inspiration. Um, so I did not waste that fat quarter bundle. Um, I have wanted a red and white quilt for a long time. Ever since uh, Lori Textilist's first video, she was showing one um, that she was making her daughter. Um, and I thought that was beautiful and I wanted red and white quilts. And that was just kind of in the back of my head. And then remember Arlene Cohen from um, Works by ABC, she, I think she went to some exhibit it was all red and white quilts and she was showing pictures and a book and stuff like that and it was just always in my head that I read wanted a red and white quilt I had that red and white bundle and I finally made one so um this is not a, this one like the other one is just not a pattern it's just me repeating myself over and over again so um this is my sawtooth I did sawtooth stars um how do I show a whole quilt I don't know here we go it's just the same thing over and over, um, but I'm extremely proud of it. It took me a long time, um, not so much the piecing, but I hand quilted the whole thing. Um, I love hand quilting. I do it um, big stitch quilting. So it's, I'd say probably a stitch every eighth inch. And I don't know if you can see it. 
Um, I calculate it took probably took me about 70 hours to hand quilt this. Um, just kind of going from how long it took to, you know, do star and do the sashing. Um, and it's simple. I just kind of went around. Um, you can't really see it. And then I did a, the middle square and then I did the sashing. Um, and it was a very nice, relaxing um, process. And then I did a pieced back with the leftovers. I think I'm just going to insert pictures of the full pieces um, just to give you an idea. But yeah, so th that is my second completed quilt. And that's, I've showed you all of my completed quilts. Um, but I'm going to show you my works in progress as well. But um, yeah, it's definitely a labor of love. Um, I use, um, I was, oh, I was talking about the big stitch quilting. So it's about a stitch every eighth inch. I use um, Primitive Gatherings, big stitch quilting needles. And um, I used, on this one, I used Valdani thread, um, Pearl 12. So that's my sawtooth start quilt. It's a good thing I'm doing this in segments kind of thing because I keep remembering quilts that I haven't mentioned. So there's one that, um, I don't even remember where I made it. I feel like I must have made it before these. Hold on. Um, a flannel quilt. I wanted a flannel quilt for the winter. I think originally I, I made this for my partner, but he wasn't interested in it. And I'm glad because I love this thing. And it's just flannel squares. I, I didn't know enough about fabric. Um, I just bought um, apparel flannel um, from Joann's to make this. Same with the back. And I this was just tied because it's so thick and heavy. But it's very heavy and very simple. But I use this in the winter and I love it. So that's my flannel quilt. Um, and then I completely forgot about a quilt that I'm not going to show you because I don't want to make you sad. This is, um okay, I'm sure you've heard of the Meadowland quilt. Um, it's a very cool design by Then Came June. I'll insert a picture here. Um, a lot of people made this quilt. I um, I heard about it from a stitching friend. Emily Weber had left a comment on um, one of my videos um, when I think I showed her a different quilt and um, or talked about quilting. And she said she was making it. She was inspired by Susie Reno, another floss tuber, and um, is a great pattern. It is very beginner friendly. Um, it looks I'd say it looks like it's one of those quilts where if you're a beginner you can make it but it looks really cool it looks like very impressive i think um anyway i love this fabric line called voise um and um i was very excited and i made the quilt and i loved it and i just i made some mistakes that have been really good learning lessons the quilt is still exist my dog loves it um but um, I'm not gonna, you know, like go into all of it because like I said I don't want to be sad. Just, just know I learned the lesson that like if you, if you're gonna like base some fabric on your cross stitch and make do a really long stitch length on your machine, just remember to go back and adjust it to a normal stitch length before you sew up a quilt. You know, so let's just say I learned a lesson. But um, I, I can't throw it away because <laughs> even though it depresses me because I'm very like conscious of things I put in the landfill, you know, I'm, I'm a make do and mend kind of person. So I, I can't do that, but my dog's adorable. Anyway, um, I did make some throw pillows to go with it with a scrap. So I figured I could at least show you those. Um, I loved the colors in this line. I, I hand quilted these as well. This is the other one. Um, so, you know, those go on the couch and um, I loved, um, I really did love this line. So I made a whole set of placemats. Um, they're not pieced placemats, they're just, um, this beautiful print um, and then I just backed them with polka dots because I wanted to make a bunch and I was too cheap to buy it for both sides but um, yeah so that's been a beautiful line and I still have scraps left I'm sure I'll make something else with them but uh, I did make that I did make that quilt um, and I, I do recommend the pattern um, okay so those are two quilts I forgot oh I did make a patchwork quilt for my cousin's um, little girl I'll insert a picture of that 
just patches. Um, I'm going to be making another one of those soon for another cousin's baby, but those are fun. You can just pick out some cute fabric and sew some squares together. Um, okay. So the rest of the quilts I want to show you are uh, my current works in progress. Um, so this one is in the quilting stage. I, I made a red and white quilt that I showed you, but I also wanted a blue and white quilt. And I thought it would be fun to make a checkerboard quilt. Um, and this one is inspired by um, one I saw in Buttonwood Farm by Maggie Bononomi. Um, she made this one. Um, this one is finished at one inch squares and she pieces by hand. I did not do either of those things. Um, I would love to do a postage stamp quilt one day, you know, finished at one inch squares. Um, I just know that that's a lot of work because this is these, this one I'm showing you is finished at two inch squares and that's over a thousand squares. Um, so that would be over 4,000 for a postage stamp quilt. But over time, I mean, I think if I just made blocks here and there. Anyway, I made this um, quilt with um, indigo gatherings from Primitive Gatherings, um, just beautiful blue and whites. And then I added a few gold squares in from a Joe Morton print. Um, and I'll insert a picture of this one. So this one right now is basted and I've started hand quilting it. Um, and the yellow, the gold squares are just kind of random. Um, but I love this one. And um, I am hand quilting this with uh, DMC. Um, so the DMC I'm using is Pearl and it's size eight. Um, and I, I think I bought it years ago at estate sales. It's really old. Um, I don't know how old, but um, it's been around a while. And I don't know if this is still the case or not because I don't have any newer pearl um, from DMC, but I found that the size eight DMC is the same size as the size 12 Valdani, which is a little confusing to me. So, but that's what I'm going with. It's, um, I, I should have enough for the quilt. Um, I'm just going, lines across like that and I think I might go back through so it'll end up being X's on the blue but I think I'll like that we'll see but um I enjoy it it's uh big stitch quilting goes pretty quickly it's just a matter of you know making time because it's that you know it's what I do to relax and watch I'll relax and watch tv and do that that's how I do cross stitching so I have to get myself to pause on the cross stitching in order to work on hand quilting um but there's really no rush um, I, when I finished that uh, Sawtooth Star quilt, I showed my mom and she, you know, she said lots of nice things and, and she said, so what are you going to do with it? And I just kind of stood there like, uh, what do you mean? <laughs> what am I going to do with it? Like, I just, I don't, <laughs> I like never thought of that. I don't, you know, like, I don't, um, I don't know how to explain that to a non-quilter. Like, I just want to make them. I just have to make them. I don't, I don't know what I'm supposed to do with them. <laughs> I don't have anywhere really, I can't think of my house where I could hang a whole quilt. Um, I don't know. I guess I switch them out. I don't know. I'm not, but I'm not worried about it. <laughs> but I thought it was kind of funny because I don't know. I don't know what I'm supposed to do with the quilts. Um, use them obviously, but I mean, how many do you need? So, um, yeah, so that's my checkerboard quilt. Um, next, let me go get my next one. Okay, the next one is actually from a pattern this time. This is the Wild Goose Chase quilt from Fat Quarter Shop. Um, this is from their series, oh, a classic and vintage series, they call it. So um, they, they, they make a video um, and they have a free block pattern and then you can buy the quilt pattern for an extremely reasonable price. So um, I am making this. I changed a couple things. I'm not using the tri or the, um, I can't, is it triangle on a roll paper or the flying geese on a roll? I can't remember. I'm sorry. I'm not using the paper. Um, I use a Creative Grids flying geese ruler that I really like. Um, and it, it uses a method of making them bigger and then trimming them down, which is very helpful for me. Um, so I, I had to change things a little bit for that, cutting in directions, that kind of thing. And then, oh, um, this is kind of, these squares are two colors each. I made mine three colors each, so I'll show you. I'm using um, the Lancaster line by Joe Morton and fabric from Pam Buddha's um, Cheddar and Chocolate line. Um, you know, feel free to tell me, you know, is this angle is not helpful because 
I'm just finding it challenging, but um, this, I'll, you know, I'll do a picture here. This This is where I'm at. I still have to add a border. Um, so I did the backgrounds and these reds and oranges, and then I've got um, brown and tan flying geese. And I have to add the border, like I said. Um, I'm going to be doing it in this dark brown. I, um, I was gonna do it in black, in a black print, and um, I did the cutting and everything. I sewed one of the borders on. I was like, oh no, it was too harsh. Um, so another lesson learned, lay out the fabric before you cut it. I have to cut that fabric for the brown fabric. And I don't know about you guys, but trying to cut like two yard lengths of six inch, of six and a half inches or whatever it is, is a little stressful I'm trying to get them straight. So I just love, I love flying geese and I love how these look. Um, all going in towards the same. They, you know, this was this was definitely challenging for me. Um, I find challenged also by the seams. Um, I'm guessing it's different if you're if you do it on the, you know, use the papers like they do in the pattern. Um, I just went my usual method for flying geese, and then so there's definitely some parts where it's going to be bumpy, and I got to figure that out. Um, I made when I decided I wanted to make this quilt. I made one block, and I actually was like, okay, I'm not going to make this quilt. It's too hard. Um, I had never worked with bias edges before, um, but I just loved it so much. I was like, oh, you just gotta, you just gotta figure it out. You just gotta do it. So I, I took, um, I picked out, um, a couple of the seams and watched the video with Kimberly Jolly. And she, you know, talks about the bias edges and how to pin it. And she gives you tips on where to sew it. And that helped a lot. Um, very thankful to her for making that video and um, I was able to make the whole quilts and um, I'm my plan is to hand quilt this one as well so you know I'll show a finished product in five years from now um, I haven't decided um, how to do the back I like piece backings I think they look really cool um, I like especially like in, an, in antiques where you can see like oh they you know they made do with the scraps um, but when it comes time for a backing I'm always like oh it would be really beautiful to have one beautiful print on the back and easier. Um, but then it makes a lot of sense to do piece backing because I got all this fabric, can use some of it, right? Um, and I use the scraps and it'll look cool. But then I'm like, oh, well, what if I want to use those scraps in a future? You know, it's like those same debates over and over again. So I do think I want to do a pieced backing on that one. I didn't show you the back on the checkerboard quilt. Um, I actually went with a more modern fabric um, just because I love this print. Um, it's from, getting threads all over me, sorry. Um, it's, the line is called Alma and, um, it's, uh, Ruby Star Society. I can't remember if they were cotton and steel when this came out. I think it's Ruby Star Society. And then I also did, I just pieced in a, the piece of that gold from Joe Morton. Um, but it's just these butterflies. Yay! Um, yeah, so... That's that one. Um, I think I just have the one one more. Okay, so the last one I'm gonna show you is my Blackbird Designs quilt. It's called Midnight Silhouette. Um, they just I know they reprinted this pattern a few years ago, so it shouldn't be too hard to find. Um, I know a lot of their there's a good amount of their books are out of print, um, but they are out there on the secondary market. Um, some harder to find than others. Um, my unicorn is one called Christmas Memories. Um, but I don't know if I'm ever find that one. That one they released in four parts. I would, oh, I hope they re, just send it out in the, in the universe. I hope they reprint that one one day. But um, I figure there's so many designs out there that if I really sat down and combined them, I could try to make something similar. But I'll, I'll insert a picture of the Christmas memories one here just to torture you. Isn't that beautiful? Um, I'm actually like not a huge Christmas person. I'm more of a Halloween person to be honest, but something about that quilt when I first saw it, I probably ran across it on my Pinterest or something. Um, I don't know. It's just that it just struck a nerve. But um, so there are some out there that like can't get, but um, there's so many beautiful ones and some of, some of the books are easier to obtain than others. They just, and then they just reprinted Raven. Um, which is an awesome one. So I'm hopeful that maybe they'll reprint some others over time. But anyway, this, I mean, I fell in love 
the moment I saw this quilt. Um, there's, a, there's a similar cross stitch design to this. Um, and uh, I just knew I had to make it. I think this really kind of pushed me into like, okay, let's let's do this applique thing. Um, I always, I mean, if you would have asked me five years ago um, if I'd applique something, I'd be like, no way, that's impossible. And if you've never applique something but are interested, I just want to say, if I can do it, seriously, you can do it. Um, it is not hard. It's, you know, there's some pieces are more challenging than others, but really it just takes um, some good tools, a method, um, and then just patience, I think. It's a, it's a slower moving thing, it's hand stitching, you know? So um, it, that can also make it very relaxing. Um, you're not using a machine, you're just kind of sitting there and um, that gives you more control because it's you and the pieces. Um, so I'm going to show you where I am with this quilt. I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about how I do applique and I'm gonna show you some of the tools I use. And I figure if you, um, if you're experienced and you have any tips for me or you think recommendations, anything like that, I would love to hear them. And if you're new at it or just considering it, maybe seeing some of the tools I use can be some help to you or, you know, get you started down a path. So, um, okay. So again, this is what it's going to look like one day when everything is complete. Um, and I can't remember when I started this off the top of my head, but, um, I think I've been working on this over a year now, maybe I'm not sure. Um, Okay, so I'm going to start with the borders. Um, so these are the borders. And they have you do um, bias binding. They just have you use a bias tape maker. Um, it's quarter inch bias binding and sew that down. And then you sew down all of your leaves. Um, you know, this pattern came out years and years ago originally, so there's not like you can buy, it's not like you can really just buy kits for it anymore, um, but it's made of colors I love, and so I took them from my stash for, for these borders. Um, there's four borders. Um, let's see. I, you know, I'm just looking at them now, and I'm like, I hope they all have kind of the same sparsity at their leaves, the same kind of density. Um, you know, the instructions, I am like someone who, I would love just like a grid, just like cross stitch. I would love just a grid. You could tell me exactly where each leaf should be placed and exactly how these vines should be placed. But it's more like, oh, whimsically place the vine. And I'm like, there is nothing whimsical about the way my brain works. It is, uh, I wish, I wish I was creative like that. But um, I think it worked out. Um, but yeah, I'm looking at this one and I'm like, I'm not sure. I might have to add some more leaves in there. We'll see. Um, but I don't mind doing that. They're fun. Um, so yeah, so I, I think in the end I made as many leaves as they said to make, but I, I ended up needing some more and it looks like I might even need some more. But anyway, there's four borders. They're big. Um, and what I would do, um, the vines are kind of annoying to sew down. Um, but I would, you know, make them with the bias tape maker, um, glue them, um, I'll show you what I use, and then, um, you could do probably like two to three leaves in an hour. They don't take that long once you get the hang of them. So, so those are the borders. Um, I have now pieced together all of my star units. The stars are fun. They're kind of scrappy so that you have like different centers, um, than the points, um, and just like kind of a variety. And hopefully they'll all look good when they're laid out. Uh, I think there's 22 stars. So I've got those set. I've got my my black squares cut. Um, I have to look up what I used. But my background is, I want to say it's Blossoms by the Tattooed Quilter. Um, it's just like a black on, like kind of gray spots on a black. So nice and easy to use for me. And then let me show you where I am. Currently the last piece is... Um, Appliquing that center um, cat on the roof of the house with the moon. Um, once I finish appliquing it, then I will be able to piece everything together. So here is where I am. Um, you may have seen this on Instagram if you follow me, but I'm hoping this will give you some perspective on the size because it, I think it's actually kind of surprising how big this is. So this is my cat on a roof. Um, that the bottom here is some of this will be trimmed off and then um, sewn the seam, so that's why it looks a little messy. So I'm right now I'm in the process of doing these vines. 
I've just got them pinned into place and um, I have to, I have all the leaves and berries to sew on. So there's still a good amount of work left, but um, I've got the bigger pieces in. Um, I haven't tr cut off the rest of the bias binding yet because I want to be safe. Um, I did a, a moda grunge for the moon. Um, and then this is, the cat is a homespun, I think. Well, it's a woven, definitely. Um, and, uh, yeah. And then the rest are from, well, this is a Janet Claire, but, um, these are mostly Joe Morton. Mostly. There's some other designers in there. It's all this stuff from my stash. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm proud of this. I, you know, like, again, I, I mentioned the beginning, I'm not a perfectionist and they're, I'm a beginner at this, so there are definitely some some flaws. Um, like, I don't always get everything down completely flat, so I don't know how this is all going to look come quilting and washing and all of that, but um, I'm doing my best, and I'm happy with it so far. Um, I'm trying to think of anything else I should tell you about this. Um, hmm. No about it it's fun um oh I was gonna say you know I I'm hand quilting things um part of it is I really enjoy the process um but part of it is that I'm really I'm not good at machine quilting um and I say that not to be mean to myself I just I'm not good at it sorry we're just all the time um I'm not good at it because I don't have a lot of experience with it and I don't have a lot of experience with it I don't really enjoy it and I don't enjoy it because I'm not good at it and I'm not good at it because I don't want you know it's like one of those things so I know I need to just practice more with the um the quilting but um I don't know I just get so frustrated so I do need to practice with that so I guess just looking at I bring it up because um with this quilt I was thinking I was going to hand quilt all of this and that it would be fun to do like, you know, the different, maybe, you know, do some different colors in the different spots. Um, but as I'm applicating some of these things, there are multiple layers of fabric and that can be challenging just in doing the applique. It's a little tougher. I can't imagine how I quilt, hand quilt it. Um, when you're, you know, if you've never hand quilted, you're kind of, you're going from the top, going through the layers. Um, and you, so you need it to be kind of soft and supple. Um, and this is not. Um, I'll show you the supplies I use. That's part of the reason is that there's kind of like a, an ironed on paper in here. So um, so we'll see how that, that what happens there. Um, if you have any feedback, please. I'm open to hearing it. So um, so I thought I'd just talk a little bit about my hand applique journey. Um, so I started um, going back to Lori um, from Textilis, she um, showed a uh, set um, that she got in a set of tools. Um, they're called Appliquick. I'll put it on the screen and I'll, I'll put it in the notes below. Um, and these are tools, I believe they're made in Spain. And um, she showed that she was using them. Um, she was starting a Blackbird Designs quilt. And um, that was kind of, those tools kind of sparked like that feeling of like, oh, you know, like maybe I could do this, you know, that makes it look a lot more doable than um, needle turn just really intimidated me. Now, I, now I think might as well start with needle turn. Why not? Like, I think that's as doable. But um, at the time that kind of intimidated me and those tools that I decided to try out and I'm really glad I did. So um, I'm going to show you what those look like. The main set, the main tools are these. Um, and I bought a, like a starter kit basically um, off of Etsy. And I don't want to get the name wrong, so um, I'm going to put the shop name on the screen and then I'll also link it down below. Um, and these are high quality made, like these are um, surgical steel. Um, and they have these points at the end. And with this, you hold down your pieces, this little forked end. And then this is kind of like, um, it reminds me of something you would use for like on your cuticles, I think they used to do. Um, and it's like this slanted edge and you use this to... Um, Kind of flatten down um, your edges so and then when things are really small you can use the two pointed ends um, and you'll see if you ever look up like things people make with applique tools um, there's a whole style of applique um, from my um, understanding I think maybe it's popular in Spain and maybe in Japan um, but um, where they applique cute little small things and they make cute like um, accessories and 
you know, bags and stuff like that and tiny little pieces. It's adorable. Um, anyway, so these are those tools. This is part of that starting kit. And then there's two, um, I think there's three pairs of scissors available. So these, I have two. I think I'm saying that right. Anyway, these are the big ones. And these are made, um, so they're very, um, I don't know the word, ergonomically correct or helpful. Um, you use all of your fingers. Let's see if I can, like this. <laughs> so it doesn't give you hand cramps when you're using them. And then they have these serrated edges and they're also made of the surgical steel. And then these are smaller ones. I think there may be a size in between that I don't have, but again with the serrated edges, so they really grip the fabric. Um, so those are in there. There's also these tweezers, um, which are, I'm told, very helpful if you have like arthritis in your hands. I have not had to use these yet because I haven't done any small little pieces, but these are helpful for that. And then they include, I don't think this is the one that came with my starter kit, but um, you do use a fabric glue. Um, this is Soline. I think it came with Bowen. You could use whatever you want, I guess. Um, and then there's the Appliquick paper, which looks like this. And so what you do is you, you take, you lay this paper over your template. It's thin. The glossy side, it has a glossy side, which has glue on it. And you trace right on, you write onto the glossy side. You can use a Sharpie or I have a pencil in here and um, you write onto the glossy side so you don't have to reverse anything. Um, and then you cut out on the line, take that glossy side, you put it on your fabric, and you press it, and it adheres to the fabric. And then you trim around it with you know some space around, eighth inch to a quarter inch. Um, and then you go around the edges of that piece and you put a layer, you put some glue. There's videos on YouTube of how to do this. Um, and um, and then you go around and you push in the little edges. So for example, um, this is like a cutout. Um, I've cut out the, sh you know, trace the template and cut it out as one of the leaves in Blackbird Design Quilt. And then when I'm done doing the process, that's what it looks like. I've just pressed the edges around. Um, let's see, I don't have I ha don't get like a super sharp edge yet. I haven't quite figured that out. Um, still working on that, but I can get pretty good. Um, yeah, so that's what the finished thing looks like. Um, I showed you the glue I'm using and the tools I'm using. Um, I'm, you know, I think if you had like the paper, that would be like the main starting point. You could use your own scissors. You could use your own fabric glue. Um, I do think these are very helpful, but if you're creative, you could try something else. Um, so far, I've been using Bias Tape Maker for the stems um, per Blackbird Designs, but there's also um, there's another tool that I'll be trying out in the future, um, and now I'm forgetting the name, but they're a, a bias bar, I think they're called, um, and it's a different method of doing it, but I haven't tried that out yet. I use... Um, uh, basic glue. Um, I think this is Roxanne's. Um, and so I will apply glue to the edge of the piece and put it down, um, you know, put it down and kind of flatten it and let it dry. Um, I found putting on the edges is better for me than putting in the middle, um, because that helps me keep it so that the, um, the piece is leveled out. And if I let it, you know, if I let it scrunch up, on the fabric, then there's going to be like um, scrunched up fabric. It's not going to be nice and flat the way you want it. Um, thimbles I use. So I have tried a few different thimbles and they either don't work for me or they don't um, fit right. So I'm actually using thimble pads. Um, I wish I could just have a thimble that worked for me because I don't like that these don't last forever. I don't like, you know, it's a waste, a little wasteful to me. And then you have to buy more when they run out, but they really do the trick for me. And I use these in my hand quilting too. Um, I just put it on the tip of my finger and I don't, I'm not slowed down by a big thimble. So I use those. Um, and I wanted to show you the needles, um, but I couldn't find like a, pa a, a no, unopened package that I use. So if that's something you need to know, um, just let me know and I will look that up.
Um, I also sometimes use the, like with the vines that I showed you, I use clover applique pins. And um, most of my applique I do with Aurifil um, 80 weight thread. Comes in spools like this, like wooden spools, and that's amazing. It like disappears. Um, but if I can't, um, like with this one, like the quilts I'm working on, if if I, I don't have a million colors of the Aurifil, so you know, I, you can buy little sets that have different colors in them. Um, so I have a couple of those sets, but if I, if I need a color that I don't, um, and I don't have one, then I'll, I'm just using my 50 weight sewing thread. So like I've, I've been using my 50 weight Guterman that I can get at Joann's. Um, I'm not too picky about it, but, uh, but I do love the 80 weight. Um, so when I, um, when I got the tools, um, I decided I needed some kind of pouch to put them in because, I mean, it's just like, knowing me, I just impale myself on these. So I, um, I designed, you know, a, a holder for them. Um, and I made, I, I had to sew a prototype first, um, because I, I'll make a million mistakes. And I didn't want to do that with nice fabric, but then in the end figured it out and I made myself one. And then I decided my first applique project would be applicating the cover. Um, as good practice and it was good practice um, I already learned a few lessons there so this is this is my my case like example first lesson use a light background I don't know why I didn't think of that I just again typical Olivia just picked fabrics I liked <laughs> um, but um, I meant to look up what the pattern I took this from so I'm gonna insert a picture here Um, it's from um, uh, Primitive Quilts and Projects magazine, um, so I used that, um, and then I just stitched a, you know my name on it. So if I get hit by a bus, give this to Olivia from Pumpkin Hollow Quilts because she won't have to make any updates. Um, so then inside, I have um, this is just a hexagon flower that I made, and. Um, this is where all my tools go. So I, in here is a zipper pouch and I put all of my threads in there. Um, I've got, um, you know, my glues and scissors and pencil. Um, my long, <clears throat> my long tools go in here. Um, my scissors go in here. My, oh, why am I telling you? You can see. Needles and pins are over here. And then in here I've got my Apple Quick paper, um, you know, directions that come with things. Um, and so that works for me. And then I, this has a pocket right here that I usually keep my pattern in. Um, so that's that. Um, and what else was I going to tell you about? I showed you what they look like for, um, when I made the projects, you know, like for the, um, midnight silhouette quilt, there's, you know, hundreds, uh, probably at least a hundred pieces. So I trace those, cut those out, and then I just kind of put them in baggies um, that I had from my cross stitch goodies um, and just put some extra, you know, I had the cardstock. I just, I put labels on these. This is not a cute way of doing it, but it is an organized way. And I don't know how that'll, um, that'll probably change over time, but that helped me keep things a little um, organized because there's so many pieces and um, I just keep them all in a ring and usually tuck them in that pouch. So that's how I do my applique. Um, it's fun. Um, it's, I mean, once you start, it's like another rabbit hole, right? It's like now you're looking, now I'm looking at like all these applique, there's just a long list of applique quilts I would love to make, um, but they do, they're slow and they take time. And again, it's that time of, that's shared with hand quilting and cross stitching and all of that. So, um, but it's fun to, to dream about it and um, come up with new projects. So, um, that is the main so the main things kind of what i'm working on now in quilting i working on the applique of that centerpiece on midnight silhouette i am hand quilting my checkerboard quilt i need to add the borders onto my wild goose chase quilt i need to trim and bind my table runner i think that's an accurate update of where i am on all my projects I think that's it. Of course, I have other things I want to start, but I'm trying, I've really tried to stay 
on task and not um, keep starting new projects because I am someone who will get overwhelmed and then be like, oh, what do I, what am I going to work on? And then I'll, I'll just be like, oh God, too overwhelmed. I'm just not going to work on anything. So I'm trying to keep, you know, keep it um, to a smaller amount of projects. Um, I think um, I finished out. I don't, um, I guess I'm going to do kind of a haul, but it's not really a haul. It's not things I just purchased. It's just a few things that I thought I would check in. So one second. So maybe, um, on my immediate radar would be a different, would be a better name for this segment. Um, so these are kind of the things that are like in my head right now that I want to work on. I don't, you know, soon, um, sooner rather than later. I, um, my mom has, um, one of the bedrooms in her house, um, has, I guess they consider it a kind of a guest room, but, um, they kind of use it like a den. Like they sit in there and, and watch TV, my parents. And, um, she did a little mini makeover in there. Uh, my sister and I painted the walls, um, repainted the walls for her and she got a new like sofa bed and, um, you know, a new rug and pillows and the, the color scheme was kind of like blues and, um, coral. And so I wanted to make her a quilt, um, to go in there and, I got the Campfire Glow Quilt from Then Came June. Um, I'll insert a picture here. And so I thought I would make that um, for her. And so I'm going to try using, this will be my first quilt with solids. Um, I'm gonna give it a shot. I'll show you the colors. Um, my sister Elena helped me pick them out based on like what she had in, um, what she has in there. And I, I had a Kona, solids um color card and so these are the the f colors we picked out um this is so not me this is coral <laughs> it's like i need sunglasses to look at it and i'm still not entirely convinced if i'm going to use it because i was just there yesterday and this might be a little bright so we'll see but my plan is to make that quilt with these um fabrics and then for the back i chose this um so i think um, I think my mom will like that. So that's that's one that's on my immediate radar that I want to do. I, I think kind of giving myself, she doesn't know I'm making it, so I'm kind of giving myself a loose deadline of Christmas to, just to give myself a good amount of time, especially if I hand quilt it. So that's that plan. Um, I have another um, cousin of mine in Switzerland. Um, she's she's going to be having a baby boy in September. Um, so I was just visiting with my mom and we came across a quilt shop. My mom doesn't quilt and she'd never been in a quilt shop. So that was an experience for her. Um, especially because the one we came across, I'd never been there before. It's called Always Quilting in San Mateo and it's huge. San Mateo, California, sorry, I'm in the Bay Area. And, um, she helped me pick out fabrics. So, um, this is like kind of the main one we're going off of. It's Go Safari, I think it's called, um, by A.E. Nathan. It's not a flannel though. Um. And so we thought that was pretty cute. So she helped me pick out some colors to go with that. You know, at least a couple of these are Lori Holt fabrics. Um, and I think that's gonna be really cute. And that'll probably just be a simple patchwork. I didn't even have a pattern in my head. I just, we were there and it was fun to pick them out with her. So this is what, this is what I'm gonna do with that. It'll just be a baby quilt um, and should be nice and simple. Um, I, uh, so I mentioned um, I love log cabins. So. I'm sure you probably watched Christy um, from Crosshatch Quilts and Olivia from Pumpkin Hollow Quilts, but they've both made this amazing Primitive Gatherings log cabin quilt, and they have it sometimes hanging behind them in their videos, and, like, I want, I want to make that quilt. I just, it's so gorgeous. Um, I don't know if I'll make that, you know, exact pattern one, but um, I, uh... I've watched videos by Marty Mitchell and I have a book from her on making log cabin um, blocks and I have one of her rulers. Um, so I might just use her tips and tricks but basically copy what they're doing because I want a red and white one. Um, I bought um, Redwood Gathering from Primitive Gatherings. After I made my red and white quilt, I was like, okay, I got that out of my system. I don't need to make another red and white quilt. And then I went and bought this bundle of red and white fabric. <laughs> um, these are beautiful though. And I loved the Indigo Gatherings. Um, set as well so I want to do that that's long term <laughs> um I feel like a couple people have shown this book lately or at least um well I just watched um uh um god I just totally went blank um anyway I, a couple of people have showed Joe's little favorites Daisy K Primitives I'm sorry I, she was just showing this um and again I I mentioned I love Joe Morton and um I, uh, I, she makes these beautiful quilts and, um, I had had on my eye on these 
her little favorites books for a long time. I hadn't purchased them. And then um, uh, Martin Gale has a warehouse sale. Um, I think they used to do it two or three times a year. They didn't have it during COVID, but then just a couple of months ago, they had they finally had one after a while. And um, they had a bunch of amazing um, Civil War reproduction fabric books on sale for $8 each. And so I, I finally picked this one up. And I would love to learn to piece like this um, with small pieces. Um, I find it very challenging still. And um, it'll probably take me a while to get there, but I need to at least practice a little bit. Um, and there's just so many good things in here. So I, I bring it up because I saw, I feel like Rebecca from Hedro Stitching also showed one of the little favorites books. Um, so maybe ladies, if you see this video, we need to go down this path together and, uh, see what happens. Um, this was a book that I found, um, eBay suggested it to me, I think probably from my Blackbird design searches. Um, and it caught my eye. It's called Away From Home, quilts inspired by the Lowell Factory Girls. Um, Lowell's, Lowell is a city in Massachusetts and uh, my company's biggest office is in Lowell. And I think that's why it caught my eye, but also this cover. And um, there are a lot of cute projects in this that I want to make. And it's also has letters and, um, information on these girls that worked in factories in Lowell. Um, Industrial Revolution is kind of um, a period I like to, I love learning about. Um, and I thought this was really interesting and I would love to make this piece. Um, but I thought I would just show you a couple things in here real quick. This is like the main, the big quilt that you can make. Um, and it has all the patterns for this in there. I don't know if I would try to conquer that, but um, I think at least that centerpiece would be a cute wall hanging. Um, and there's a pillow in here that I really, all right, it's a mini quilt. I want to make it as a pillow. I just think it's so pretty. Um, I think that's beautiful. Um, a couple other things that I would love to make. Um, just like in um, cross stitch, I love houses and they have, um, you want to show you this one isn't that but I love this one too this centerpiece oops um, here it is I think that's just adorable so there's fun stuff in here I will say one of the drawback one thing I don't like about this book is the way they did the templates um, they just like cut them off like this so that you have to put the pages up together. Um, maybe I'm spoiled from Blackbird Designs, but um, I appreciate that they put things on individual pages. Um, I used to work in publishing. I realized you can't, you know, having the, the pullouts is a super high cost, but you could at least put, you know, the whole shape on one page and have a few extra pages. Sorry, but I feel it had to be said and I just want to warn you um, in case you're interested in this book. But Here's a look at some of the quilts they've got in there. Um, so this is on my radar, especially that pillow I showed you, the one I want to make into a pillow. Um, I would love to make that, and I think I have fabric in my stash that would work for that. Um, I think that was it for my, yeah. Oh my gosh, that's it. Um, I know I've talked a lot, so if you have listened to this whole and watched this whole video, I just want to say thank you. Thank you for letting me go off about this stuff. Um, if you have any questions about anything, please put it in the comments down below and I'm happy to answer. If you have, again, if you have feedback, advice, um, any of that, I am very open to hear, hearing it. And I would love to get your, you know, any advice you're willing to give. Um, yeah. And so I hope to make another one of these videos. I, my cross stitch videos are, you know, one every three or four months. I can't imagine my quilting videos will be more often. Um, I like to, I like to have progress, like decent progress to show and, I'm a little lazy about making videos. They're not the easiest thing for me. Um, but um, I do continue, I do hope to come back and show some progress. And um, if you make videos about your quilting, like a similar format, um, you know, like the kind of show and tell and casual quilting videos, I'd love to see those. Um, I'd love to know about your channel. So please let me know down below. And um, that's all I've got. So have a great day, everyone. Thanks for watching. Bye.